Hello, everybody. The mesmerizing wheel of the movie reel going. And uh, I just wanted to say hello from everybody. And we have some words from all of us going uh, going forward. But first of all, I just want to say um, welcome to virtual concert number six um, and greetings to our friends, our families and to our students. I hope we have lots of students show up tonight. Um, thank you again and again and again to Bob and Diane for sponsoring this uh, this uh, home concert series, this online series, and for also creating your home concert series uh, for St. Paul Community of uh, Music Lovers and also beyond, because there's a lot of people beyond in the country that have never heard us play before or can't hear us play before because of distance and are now listening to our concerts. So that's great. Um, Atari is streaming along now regular with regular uh, uh, rehearsals now indoors. No, we are not outside uh, freezing like we, <laughs> this, we, some people may have thought we were, but we are practicing regularly now in a large ventilated space and we continue to explore the vast range of string quartet repertoire, learning many new works for the first time. Tonight, uh, both the Verdi and the Lu Yun are first outings for us, and the Shasti Three is new territory for Patty. So uh, we are very much looking forward to uh, presenting all three of those for you. Uh, but before we get started, though, maybe uh, a word about supporting the quartet. Nancy, could you maybe say a few words for us? Oh, absolutely. Hi, everybody. It's great to have you with us tonight, and I'm excited about the program, as my colleagues uh, can uh, attest that they are too. Um, yeah, November is coming up really soon, and that's the time in Minnesota that we um, support the arts through Give Men. Um, and Artaria has a web page at Give Men if you'll go visit it. Um, we could use some support this year. Um, our our income has dropped 54% since March. Um, we're doing our best. We're hard at work. We are coaching our chamber music students at our chamber music school. Um, we have just recently moved indoors for that and we're in various locations um, coaching in um, well ventilated spaces with um, that cool, cold, shall I say, ventilation coming through the windows with uh, space heaters helping us on the floor. So we're hard at work. And um, we're enjoying being able to uh, continue to give our concerts and looking forward to what the future holds for all of us. But if you'll go visit us at Give Men, um, we would certainly appreciate it. And you'll be hearing from us with um, an email or two during, during the month of November. I believe the, the official date is November 19th, but throughout the entire month, uh, you can give. Thanks. thanks. Thanks, Nancy. I know that besides Artaria, our students are also very excited about the weekly meetings that we're having. There's not a lot of get together music going on uh, regular and um, these students have uh, really, really shown their enthusiasm for the chamber music that we're doing and uh, the, the teaching that we're giving them about the chamber music. We have a few years of experience on that and we certainly have a passion for it so now on to the concert let's keep it short and sweet right <laughs> on to the concert so uh, i think nancy you're up first with um, Ms. with verdi our first composer tonight you know we've we've just you know verdi is the 19th century's greatest opera composer okay let's just put it out there and he had so many incredible operas and um i'm fortunate to have played a few of them and, uh, as, and especially fortunate to have experienced multiple times performing his Requiem. Oh my goodness. He lived a long life in Italy and actually was part of um, the effort to unify uh, Italy. It was, it was um, under three different foreign governments uh, after the fall of the Roman Empire for a long time. And he felt so dearly about having um, his own country, as did others. That went on for quite a while, um, didn't really get settled until uh, the armistice after World War I. But in the meantime, he was a hardworking composer. And um, he was a philanthropist. He was actually um, served in his local government for a short time to get involved in things. And 
at some point in 1873, he was in Naples, um, and his soprano, who uh, was um, the only soprano trained to sing Aida, fell ill and during the, his weeks in Naples to perform. So she fell ill. They had to take about a three-week break while she recovered. And during that time, he decided, I'm going to write a string quartet. And um, he was extremely qualified to do so, just had never done that before or since. It's his only string quartet. It's gorgeous absolutely gorgeous um first movement you're going to hear um operatic themes in it second movement you're going to hear a gorgeous cello tenor aria uh played by patty and uh the the uh third movement is quite lively and then the last movement he wrote as a scherzo fugue so he really wrote this fugue lighthearted, in jest it's quite um quite the opposite of, of, uh, of a heavy, serious feud that you might hear otherwise. It's just lovely. And I think you're going to really enjoy what comes out of Mr. Verdi in the string quartet world, his one and only beautiful string quartet. We hope you enjoy.
Okay, can anyone hear me? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me start all over. Okay. I first was saying um, that Verdi was, uh, you know, encapsulated the opera so well in a string quartet. It's just kind of incredible to hear that sound world come together like that. I hope everyone can, is, is this, I guess I should double check if it's working. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Essie. <laughs> so um, the other thing I wanted to say is let's give a huge uh, acknowledgement and, you know, emoji claps for Ray for all his video and audio editing, because that's not easy to do. And that's, um, yeah, just incredibly done. So good job, Ray. Congratulations. Um, the next thing I wanted to proceed to talk about was how we came upon this piece uh, in our program tonight, Lu Yun's Temples in Taiwan. And it came about kind of from an idea that Nancy had, which sprung from the whole so social justice movement that happened you know, back in May with the death of George Floyd that happened just around the corner from where I live. And you know, Nancy kind of in response to being more inclusive with different cultures and, um, and voices, Nancy said, hey, you know, we have a lot of diversity in our quartet and our, you know, in our family. And I, you know, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> so, um, you know, I went, well, I should say I am racially both Caucasian and Taiwanese. And so I in efforts to try to find you know, more pieces by uh, Taiwanese composers or Asian composers really was the initial um, thought. Because even though Asian musicians seem to be, you know, pretty abundant in the music world, Asian composers are not as represented. And so it's, I, found, I found my own uh, journey to go find more of those composers to you know give life to their pieces so in efforts to do that i went to our friends at the chronos quartet uh there they have this amazing resource called 50 for the future which i kind of remember them doing but i, I had forgotten between the time uh and they did this initiative to collect all these open source pieces for anyone to go and perform the, the score and their recording of each piece is available. And that link, if I can find is 50ftf.chronosquartet.org if anyone wants to use this resource in the future. And I stumbled upon Lu Yun's piece, Temples in Taiwan. And upon hearing it, I just was transported immediately back to my adventures in Taiwan when I visited as a child to visit my family there. And, it, you know, just the beautiful temples and the, and the ceremonies in the streets that I witnessed as a young child. And um, it's just, it, yeah, it just takes me back. So Luyan, Luyan is a, she was born in 1982 and is still actively composing. She's the assistant professor at the Department of Chinese Music of Tiananmen National University of the Arts. And I should just read what she wrote as the introduction to this piece, which please forgive me, I am not the best at my Chinese pronunciation. So I'm, I'm trying my best, but uh, I'm sorry if I butcher anything. Her, this is her artistic statement. Temples in Taiwan are often referred to as the Gong Miao. It is a collection, a collective term for Gong, Dian, Miao, Si, Tian, Guan, Tang, and Si. Uh, it is a place for religious ceremonies. Taoism, Buddhism, and local beliefs are the most popular religious beliefs in Taiwan and are often these uh, divine gods and goddesses of different faiths will live in the same temple. This is one of the interesting features of Taiwan's religious culture. Um, this, and this is a quote of hers now. This work is inspired by the memory I shared with Kronos' David Harrington during our trip to Longshang Temple in 2010. It is divided in two movements. The first, meditation, is intended to show the solemnness of Gong Mao, 
The second religious parade was will represent the liveliness of the festival. And I just also wanted to read uh, David Harrington's specific quote on this piece, which is, when I was in Taipei, Lun Yun took me to a temple shared by three different religions. I had never heard of anything quite like that, of one space actively being shared in that way. I got to hear and witness the different ceremonies that were going on, and I was just blown away. It felt to me that that was the way forward. Lu Yun drew, drew on that for this piece, and I'm so grateful she has given us this wonderful gift. And I must say, I am too. I had such an incredible time learning this piece. You can just hear all the different instruments, uh, including, you know, we, we I, I must also say thank you to Studio Z. We, in the first movement, the meditation movement, it uh, the score calls for temple bowls. So Studio Z graciously allowed us to use their temple bowls. So thank you, thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, so I th think without further ado, let's get to the piece and I hope you enjoy uh, her composition.
Well, I haven't been to Taiwan, but I sort of feel like I've been to part of it. That's an amazing event. Uh, I'm really glad that Patty found that piece or Annalie, whoever found it for us, and then we played it. But it's really um, a marvelous piece of music. And um, uh, I, my apologies for the opening uh, technical thing. We lost the first 20 seconds of it. I don't know where it went. I will look for it later. Um, we're going to jump across the world now to something completely different, a world apart from the, uh, from the uh, pieces you've heard so far. Um, the next piece on the program is Shostakovich's Quartet No. 3 in F major, uh, composed in 1946. Uh, Russian composer Dmitry Shostakovich holds a very special place in the quartet repertoire. His collection of 15 masterworks for this medium holds its own with Beethoven, Mozart, and Haydn. No two quartets are the same, and each seems to explore a new technique for the ensemble to master. The F major string quartet by Shostakovich is a work of deeply felt ideas and painted in strong colors. It was the first quartet dedicated to his lifelong friends and collaborators, the Beethoven Quartet. Um, this talented group of musicians premiered all but two of Shostakovich's quartets, numbers one and 15, the very first and the very last quartets. Uh, the reason being he hadn't met them for the first quartet, which is a, a significantly earlier piece than the last 14. And the last quartet, 15th, members of the quartet had uh, were deceased and the group had was had disbanded. So they had to find it. Shostakovich was looking for another group to play the final quartet, which is an amazing piece of music. 
Um, the tone of this particular quartet, this masterful work, is unambiguous if the message is not. Shostakovich disliked explaining his music in words, preferring to let the music itself speak to the listener. Although there are, quote, shadow descriptions of each movement, which I'll read to you at the end, purportedly by the composer, there are their Artaria friend and subscriber, Judy Kuhn, who uh, teaches at the University of uh, Wisconsin in Milwaukee, and several other have, uh, of her colleagues have penned scholarly rebuttals to this theory, leaving us to decide for ourselves the exact story here, whether it's a personal one or something more. Uh, I think uh, Wendy Lester uses the word capacious. It's a beautiful word. Presented in five movements, sometimes rare for this medium, it opens with a childlike allegretto. The opening section is repeated very much like the classical composers of yesteryear, and perhaps even like a child's mind thinks, everything will stay the same as before. That opening cheeriness will soon become clouded by uncertainty and dissonance through the composer is careful to reassure us many times that all will be well. The second movement, a waltz, is more complex, full of anticipation. The opening melody is constantly be assailed by a mechanized stream of short staccato notes at several intervals in the movement before we are given a moving and passionate adagio section to close things out. The cello line ends with a plaintive line with almost spoken quality. You can almost hear the words, oh no, or oh no, repeated several times. What follows has been described as music depicting a, a war or battle scene with booming cannons, uh, opens the movement with a booming boom, 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 and then the event followed by a rat-a-tat-tat of machine guns, first played by the uh, first violin and then and joined by the whole ensemble. This is the heart of the crisis indeed in this piece and a terrifying event in total. In the fourth movement, um, author Wendy Lesser writes, quote, we are the dead. Death in this form is pleasurable. It is a cessation of anxieties and tensions of the pre previous movement. Ironically, unquote, ironically, this movement has an enduring tune in its short-lived wake. Introduced on the first line, the singable tune becomes an impassioned statement by the foursome, reaching epic heights on the violin before being handed off to the viola for its final somber version. The endless closing of the fourth movement, second theme, rolls magically into the fifth movement and the final work, movement of the work, as life is renewed by the cellist, picking up the pieces and moving forward in an amiable 6-8 rhythm. This movement contains many of the previous elements we have heard earlier in the piece and appears to encapsulate the whole quartet. The most amazing bit, however, is the transcendent ending that the composer has in store for us. Despite not believing in an afterlife, Shostakovich has created an ending so inspired and hopeful and otherworldly that one can certainly agree that we, when we read that this was his favorite quartet. Um, and I'd like to read a quote by Fyodor Druzhenin, if I'm pronouncing that right, who was the final violinist of the, excuse me, the final uh, person to sit violist in the Beethoven Quartet and the student of its founding violist. And here are his words. We are rehearsing his third quartet. We, excuse me, we were rehearsing his third quartet. He'd promised to stop us when he had any remarks to make. Dmitry Dmitrovich sat in an armchair with the score opened out. But after each movement ended, he just waved us on saying, keep playing. So we performed the whole quartet. When we finished, he sat quiet, still in silence, silence like a wounded bird with tears streaming down his face. This was the only time I saw Shostakovich so open and defenseless. I want to thank two uh, of my colleagues, Judy Kuhn and Wendy Lesser, for their wonderful books. I recommend them. Uh, Judy's is Shostakovich in Dialogue, Form, Imagery, and Ideas. And Wendy Lesser's book is Music for Silenced Voices. They're very different in tone and style. And uh, I think you would enjoy reading either, either one of them. Uh, Wendy's is the more, uh, more conversational, and Judy's is the, is the more scholarly in terms of uh, source material and whatnot, but both are excellent. And Wendy's uh, interviews with, uh, with the, uh, uh, the players on the, on, in the theater are amazing. So I hope you enjoy this performance of Shostakovich, Quartet Number no. 3. Oh, 
Welcome back, Artarians. Great job, guys. That's a pretty profound piece of music. Thank you, audience, for the listening list for listening to us tonight to our performance. And the next one is going to be on uh, Friday, November twenty seventh. And please join us um, afterwards tonight in our Zoom room. The link is below, which we will. Um, I'm going to open up in just a second here. And then, just so um, it's easy to remember, our concerts on Black Friday. <laughs> That's true, true. And, so get um, your sales yeah. and then go and listen to us after that. Absolutely. And once again, thank you for your donations. You've been very generous. And um, please continue to consider us um, as we get we, we weather the storm of, of uh, concerts without audiences, audiences in front of us, but certainly concerts with audiences on the air with us tonight and other times. We really do appreciate that. So. Thanks again, and uh, we will see you in the Zoom room very shortly, I hope. Come stop by and say hello to us. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.